Yeah, so we will look into glare further and uh, this is the conversion from 1 foot Lambert to lumen per feet square. So, uh, foot square to meter square point if we remember if we remember correctly then uh, oh no 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 oh. you know 1 foot was equals to 0 0.3048 meter right right so 1 foot square is equals to 0 0.3048 into 0 0.3048 so that gives us 0 0.009, 0 0.093, right? Something like this. So converting the lumen to foot square, 1.093, and uh, uh, 1 by pi, because 0 0.093 is 10.75, right? Lumen per meter square. So yeah, Lux level is lumen per meter square. So foot Lambert was lumen per feet square. Foot Lambert was, you know, Lambert is the name of the scientist because that Lambert's law I talked about. So initially they were using, because they have not changed anything else if you have seen, 1 by 60 centimeter square, right? And 680 uh, uh, lumen is equals to 1 watt. So you know, they, they did not change there, but then feet square to uh, meter square. So therefore, that much lux. So, 10.75 ASB, that is the first step. So, foot lumbar is similar to ASB for R equals to 1. Illumination of lumen per feet square has uh, a brightness of foot lumbar. And uh, because in the formula, if you have seen the brightness to the power 1.6 was there. If you see the glare formula, B0, and this was in one, just there was no power, here there was a power. So, if you take this, this into account, then we get 10 to the power 75 and 10 to the power 75 to the power 16 gives you 0.24. So, when you are using, because this this SP41 or some codes will straight away write k equals to 0.24. If you use earlier, earlier formula would have been k, k is 1 for lumen per feet square, k is 0.24 for lumen per meter square, right? So, that is it, apostille. Size is given by A cos delta cos epsilon r square. Now, what is, let us see what is this angle. Did I do a diagram? Yes, I think I have a diagram. No, not I do not have a diagram. So, is it size is written as S cos delta cos epsilon by r square because size of the object, size of the, you know, size of the, what was omega? Omega was a Omega was the size of the omega was the size of the object, size of the object, size of the object, right? So this might be there may be two. It may be in, you know it's in 3D space. So earlier you talked of horizontal surface and the projection was normal, but now it is not horizontal surface. Some other inclined surface somewhere. Some other inclined surface somewhere. So I can talk in terms of two angles. I can talk in terms of two angles and that is what we are doing. That is what we are doing A cos delta and cos epsilon. So, projection you know two, two angles are involved in the projection and delta is the angle between normal to the source and line joining the source and observer in vertical plane and epsilon is that in horizontal plane. So, this is your source let us say this is your source line joining this the angle in there will be two angles one in vertical plane another in horizontal plane azimuthal angle as well as a alti altitude angle reference altitude angle so if you take in the vertical plane so these are the two angles through this actually size we are talking of so cos delta cos epsilon by r square a is the actual area so delta is angle between normal to source and line joining the source and the observer in vertical plane right and uh, uh, epsilon is that in horizontal plane, right? Projection of normal to the source and viewing line in horizontal plane. So, that is what it is an angle between projection of normal to source and viewing line in horizontal plane. So, that is how A is found out. Okay. Position factor is 1 by P. It is given in code as a function of gamma and beta. Now, this is how gamma is defined. 
see this this angle is in one of them is in beta is in horizontal plane gamma is in so this is your lamp the source this is your object is or object you know this is this is this is where you are looking at so posi position this is the object object you know object make this angle in horizontal plane this angle in vertical plane so two position factor with respect to with respect to your eye the lamp an object i mean that what you are seeing so this this is one angle this is another angle so gamma this is gamma angle this beta angle and with respect to that it is given so maybe if we solve a problem sometime it will be clearer because this angles will become clear right this makes it yeah this makes this is gamma angle this is beta angle this is the object and uh, uh, l over l over d ed a, a is the object sorry a is the object a is the object a dash is a, a line vertical line i have drawn this is so this is in horizontal plane so the distance is ab divided by d is this angle and h divided by d is again another angle so what i do is i project my object in the vertical plane you know same as say, i mean in the same plane as this and this will be the this will be the this will be the angle and this will be the other angle so something like this beta is equals to l by d and this is h by d so what i do is uh, this is not this in vertical plane but this is not horizontal line so what i do is i join my eye to the object join my eye to the object draw a horizontal line here which cuts the projection of the source right somewhere there and draw a vertical line here which cuts the horizontal line from the source here this is the angle and this is the other angle this is the other angle this distance is l this distance is h and that's how i got it right so position factor is now this is given this is position factor values are given in table in terms of l by d and h by d in terms of l by d and h by d so these are given in terms of l by d so you'll have a table where l by d is given h by d is given on this side and position factor values are given somewhere in a table of form this is empirical so we can't do much about it i can't derive this for you all right so this you have to you know somebody has to give you those values then only you can calculate all right so this is what it is this is what it is so with this fundamental principles now we can talk in terms of calculating something like daylight fundamental principles we have understood by and large right so first we talked about what the units then requirement of lighting right for task illumination particularly and desirable things like no glare no flicker quantity of light that we require all right that's what we have seen so now we can go to daylight now if you see how light does how does light come onto from you know if i have a window something like this something like this let us say i have a window somewhere in a house oh somewhere in a house somewhere in a house i have a window so i have a window somewhere there and this is the plane where light comes now light can i am talking of daylight so from comes from the sky finally and this is my sky vault sun is somewhere there so some direct light will come into the room but this portion of the sky from where the light can come onto this point it comes from the diffuse sky this portion of the sky because this is illuminated already by the sun rays Di not directly but illuminated because sun's rays will come from all the sides this sun is too big only i am viewing it here right so diffuse sky radiation comes from all the places even if you don't see towards the direction of the sun you see the bright sky on the other side right 
if it is clear sky, no cloud or anything of that kind, so you will see total sky on the side. So, diffuse sky. So, this area, which will be an area actually, transmits some amount of diffuse light to this wall. Let me call this as A. Then, some of those from diffuse light from some of those places can get reflected in the next building, next building or sunlight directly can get reflected from the next building and this will also contribute to the light onto my table where I am interested in finding out what is the light. So, let me call this as B and some light which comes inside here will get all internally reflected and that we call this C. So, there are three components of their light which illuminates the place, the you know working plane as we call it. So, working plane, what is working plane? Working plane is something like your table on which I, I want to find out the desirable level of light or it could be table or if you are reading or a blackboard or whatever it is, so that is the working plane. So, working plane on which I am interested in finding out the amount of light. So, daylight contribution to the working plane comes from three sides. It comes from three, three things. One, coming from the directly from the sky vault, diffuse radiation from the sky vault, diffuse sky radiation. It can come from reflected from other building, right? Other building, trees, or anything external objects. And third is whatever comes in other points in the room, they will contribute to reflected light to this point. You know, it comes to some other points. So, there are three components, and the fourth one is the direct light. Now, I do not want direct light because it will bring in heat and it can also cause glare. So, direct light is not desirable, it is excluded, should be avoided for daylight, right, as much as possible because it will bring in heat in tropical climates and it can also be cause of glare because its brightness is too high, brightness is too high. At A is diffuse radiation from sky vault. B is externally reflected component and C is internally reflected component. Like we talked of integrating sphere, C is that internally reflected component which will be diffused light coming from all the walls and ceiling and roof etcetera etcetera because some light is reaching somewhere, some diffuse light or direct light is reaching, direct light though I would like to avoid, some diffuse light is reaching somewhere in the room and that is causing that would right. So, that will contribute to internally reflected component. So, diffused radiation from sky vault A externally reflected component and internally reflected component. Now, this amount which comes in I can calculate out E contribution from each one of them. I can contribute illumination contribution from each one of them, but this will vary from time to time, day to day, right. So, actually this will vary from day to time, day time to time. So, calculating this I can calculate all right provided I know the sky condition which will change from time to time because sun's position will change day to time to time in a day and day to day and then in seasons also the clouds and etcetera will come. So, this amount if I calculate it is too variable, too much variable actually. Therefore, designing my what I want to do? I want to design my fenestration, window areas, window location such that I get maximum daylight. My objective is to design the fenestration areas and their location in order to get the maximum amount of light from the sun. Now, since this will vary from time to time, day to day, if I select a window location corresponding to or window area corresponding to one time, it may not be satisfactory at other time. So, this becomes a difficult thing, but one thing is interesting, a ratio of daylight, you know ratio of outdoor illumination in open to illumination at my point, a given point, this ratio tend to remain constant because after all it is the daylight if I find out what is the you know amount of light in open like from the sky vault whatever the light in open, open area. Then ratio of the illumination on my working plane to this E 0 I call it E 0 
the illumination in open unobstructed location unobstructed point this ratio so at working plane let me call is at e divided by e0 this remains by and large by and large constant why because this is contributed by the sky sky condition right and a part of it is coming through the windows here if this bright, this this illumination goes down this will also go down besides that my eye gets adapted depending upon for example on a in a in a, in a cloudy day your op aperture will change to in a bright if the brightness is too large the eye would adjust itself so therefore this ratio has got a meaning this ratio tells me you know this ratio should be as high as possible for my for the given fenestration that i have provided that should be as high as possible that will mean that the daylight is i am getting right kind of daylight so people started thinking in terms of something called daylight factor and daylight factor is defined daylight factor is defined as the ratio of e divided by e0 e divided by e0 daylight factor is defined as the ratio of e divided by e0 so now then this ratio must have three components because e had three components right one is due to the diffuse sky another is due to whatever is coming from outside and third is due to internally reflected one so we have three components of this illumination diffuse sky vault we call it sky component externally reflected component coming from that b i was talking about and internally component is c that i was talking about and obviously the direct component d we want to avoid we don't keep that so daylight factor will have then three components sky component etc etc and all divided by e0 so sky sc sky component is nothing but esc divided by e0 eec eec divided by e0 is erc we call it erc and irc is nothing but e irc divided by e0 so these are three components of daylight factor and often we actually say in specifications that i must have a minimum 1% daylight factor in corridors in nursery school you know you are combining two things one the lighting level should be good adequate and it should be natural lighting like particularly in school this is very important you should get you know the children should get actually natural light uh, i'm not very sure is it related to issues like vitamin d or something like that kind of thing but the code specifies because you know the the body can absorb vitamin d only when you get sunlight of a particular time also that says too bright sun doesn't give you that so therefore in in many of the codes meant for schools they will specify that daylight factor in this this spaces should be so much percentage so minimum 1% 0.5% daylight factor and things like that which means that you are ensuring that you get adequate light but that too from the sunlight sunlight you know and school is obviously daytime generally uh, not supposed to be in the evening for especially for those children right so it has got three components so therefore we rather try to maximize the daylight factor often rather than simple daylight now how do i do that sky changes sky changes you know sky changes and uh, sky keeps on changing from time to time day to day etc etc so we talk in terms of i want to design and windows and fenestration i design only once i'm not going to change it of course i can put curtains and blinds and things like that but that's not the best way to do i mean after all windows i will be changing so i have to have something called a design sky now you see that we have calculated out that e0 if it is uniformly bright sky then it will be simply pi into b remember we calculated out e0 will be simply pi into b and for any window i should be able to find out because integration from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi by 2 gave me in open space for any other space any other opening 
I can find out because I, you know, the limits of integration will only change. Limits of integration will only change. But I got to know the sky brightness, which is not uniform. So one can think in terms of what is called a design sky, because design is done once only. Window areas, fenestration areas, and fenestration locations, they are fixed once. And that I should do corresponding to a given sky, right? And that sky is nothing but design sky. So design sky will be defined in terms of its brightness. So brightness of the sky changes with time. For design, it is necessary to use a standard by brightness pattern of the sky. And such a condition defined by standard sky brightness pattern is known as design sky, design sky, right? Design sky. So for example, one can use, I mean, ideal condition one could have used for subtropical climate overcast sky, but that is not used. CIE skies are there, 15 of those are there, I will talk of some of them, right? Uh, most time if B is taken to be constant with uniform brightness. So supposing I take that as an ideal sky, that will be a design sky, but that is not the case. That is not the sky. In fact, as I said that they have actually established 15 different type of sky and uh, more than that, in fact, uh, uh, there is a model called Perez model which relates to the radiation received as well. So we will discuss that sometime later on, but first let us understand what we mean by design sky. So sky pattern has to be chosen. Now, it is very important from another point of view. You see, today you have got all sorts of softwares which can calculate out the, uh, which can calculate out the daylight also. In addition to doing, uh, you know, thermal uh, uh, heat transfer calculation and then telling you what will be the cooling load for a given, given space, right? Like I mentioned, might have mentioned, like uh, uh, Equest, Energy Plus, uh, I think this is Ecotech. There are several of them softwares which actually does, some of them does only the energy calculation. Some also takes, looks into lighting also. But then you have to choose a particular type of sky for a particular location. So if you choose a wrong type of sky for let us say Delhi or tropical climate as this, you will end up with all sorts of wrong kind of predictions or wrong kind of answers. So, identifying the right kind of sky is very important out of those 15 skies because it varies. Right, so that is design sky concept. Now, I will tell you about the currently existing design sky condition or sky that has been used in Indian condition in the Indian code SP 41 or the code 2446 uh, or whatever it is. Uh, 2450 or 244, I do not remember the exact code name, I mean run number now, but SP41 gives you this all detail. Uh, this was done long back in 1960s, some research, you know, some measurements were done at CBRI Rudki. So, based on that, they did came out with this guy and, uh, you know, limited, limited, I would say, one may not, one may relook into it. Although the courts have not really re-looked into it, there is a need to re-look into it. In fact, there are articles stating that there is a need to re-look. So this corresponds to, this is very innovative actually. So idea was very innovative. They corresponded to 15 degree altitude angle of sun. This one corresponds to 15 degree altitude angle of sun. By the way, this paper was published in French language in illumination journal. Uh, some or other, I had the translation of it, but I do not find this translation on neither the paper now. But it does not matter, anyway the essence is with, there with me and SP 41 gives it all complete. So 15 degree altitude angle of the sun, they took for design sky. Now 15 degree altitude angle of the sun corresponds to what time of the day? One hour after sunrise or one hour before sunset. Right, And that is the time when you will have the least brightness of the sky. Because sun is at lower altitude, sun will now rise and uh, brightness will increase. But activity, office activity or you know most of your activity, human activity related to daylight starts after that time. It would be you know obviously much later than one hour after sunrise and much before one hour, you know, before the sunset. 
So they choose this one hour or 15 degree altitude angle of the sun and did some measurement too. And you know, this corresponds to minimum brightness expected during working hours, working daylight hours. And what they did is you can't in tropical climate the direct sunlight is not wanted. So they choose the opposite sky vault because sky can be divided into four sky vault can be divided into four quadrants. So this is your east, this is north, this is south and this is west. So sun rising somewhere from there to going somewhere there in summer or winter going from here. So what they choose is see that the sun is either in this quadrant or is in this quadrant. So one hour after sunrise they took the brightness from this quadrant brightness of this quadrant opposite to the sun right and one hour before sunrise this quadrant the reason is that that's what should be used for design purposes and your lighting should be your windows should be mostly north side so that you get the maximum daylight but not direct sunlight even if you have windows on the you know not north side but on the southern side you will have sunshades to block the only the oh yeah the, the the you know the direct sunlight during summer but winter but in anyway have diffuse skylight would be there so therefore they choose this is for design purposes design purposes they choose this so northwest quadrant of the sky vault in the morning and northeast quadrant of the sky vault in evening northeast you know that's what they choose so this is what it is right so this is this is what they choose in the morning and this is in the afternoon this is in the afternoon so this is in the afternoon this is in the afternoon opposite to the sun so that that's what they choose and so 15 degree in other words they are choosing some brightness somewhere there all right and then they did some measurement and based on this measurement also the conceptual understanding that brightness near the horizon is very high they simply choose a function in terms of bz cosec theta what is the this is theta these angles are theta these angles are theta these angles are theta so this angle is theta this angle is theta now what is cosec zero infinity cosec zero is infinity so you can't use it so they choose this this you know this is actually if you calculate them out or check with currently acceptable in fact some experiments were done later in CBRI in, in the last you know 19th, 1990s etc etc based on those some articles have come uh, from electrical engineering of Jadapur University very interesting but uh, we are not able to lay hand onto the original uh, data that was generated in CBRI by the same gentleman who also worked in the previous one that's more realistic measurement because it's an international program from where it came and obviously it doesn't match with this because that they did at that time but currently still exists in the code so I'm talking today of this one I'll obviously give you the other ones as well so this is they choose bz cosec theta that at the near the horizon the brightness is maximum because we said tropical countries brightness is very high near the maximum now it's indefined it's not defined it's undefined here so what they did is they said that okay up to pi by 12 that is 15 degree this brightness is constant right which is given as bz cosec pi by 12 and bz cosec theta in this this range bz cosec theta in this range right bz cosec theta in this range so thereby this is how they define the sky and this is at one you know on the quadrant that i talked about at seven one hour after the sunrise or one hour before the sunset and that's used as design sky that's not the sky actually will be there that's the design sky to find out the fenestration and the whole table charts all developed based on this guys which is there in sp41 you know this, that code that i talked about so this is based on this so this is the design sky they use so you want to find out d open in open simply now use cosec theta instead of bz zenith brightness multiplied by cosec theta bz is a zenith brightness multiplied by cosec theta d theta d phi you know earlier i had simply b remember this was b now it should be b was constant now it should be bz cosec theta 
and tables have been generated based on this, but then they didn't have robust computational facility those days. They did it in some intuitive manner, some ingenuine, genuine, you know, ingenuity was there. I'll discuss those, but come to the current scenario, how you can do it actually today, I'll let you know later on. So, right. So, I think that's where we stop today. Next class, we will look, look into details of this sky component tables and things like that. And they found out 8000 lux as a by their calculation from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, you know, they did, if you integrate this, this you can integrate anyway easily, because this will be 1 by sin theta. So, this is fairly easy integration, 1 by sin theta, cos x theta is 1 by sin theta, sin 2 theta is si, si, 2 sin theta cos theta, sin theta will cancel out cos x. So, that is pretty easy, B z do are measured, somewhere they found it out to be 8000 lux. So, that was, that is still being used in the IS code, I think it needs modification somebody should actually press for it and uh, possibly uh, CBRI is not doing this work anymore because the people who did this work they are not there and the, even the report is not available that is uh, the you know we could not find it so far, but let us see perhaps it will change sooner or later. So, we will look into the international ones in the next class ok, ok. So, that is what we will do. So, we will do that in the next class. Mm -hmm.